What's up guys, welcome back to my channel. So in this video, I wanna discuss a clip from Gary V when he did a brand new talk recently talking about NFTs and projects in the future. I think that's gonna be really interesting to talk about. I also wanna briefly showcase some really cool stuff that Steady Stack Titans is doing that recently partnered with my Discord. So I wanna briefly go over some of the details there with the partnership and their trading algorithmic bots that are really, really cool. So without further ado, let's hop straight into the Gary V clip and I'll discuss some of my thoughts and we'll go from there. The same reason I spoke about the 97, 98% that I kept throwing out a year ago. It was just because there was so much greed and short behavior. And that's, a, you know, that's okay, humans are flawed and that was understandable. And luckily, unlike so many of the beautiful people here in the audience, I've got gray hairs and I saw this movie in 1997 to 2001, it was called The Internet. With The Internet though, the companies had to go public and they were IPOs and not as many people were playing in it and people that were playing in it were professional investors. And that was carnage. With this, there was so many more young people in it who'd never really been professional investors. Everybody had access to it. And so my anticipation was that it was gonna be much more challenging. So in the first section of this clip, he discussed how he was continuously saying that anywhere from like 95 to 97% of NFT projects would eventually go to zero. And quite frankly, I think he was pretty correct, pretty accurate on that statement. And then he also goes on to say that he was a part of the dot-com boom and that bubble that existed and happened that eventually gave birth to a lot of the amazing products that we use today, like Facebook and Instagram and Amazon and Netflix and all these different things that we use on a daily basis that we barely get a second thought. He also touches on the fact that during the dot-com boom, regular retail investors didn't really have access to invest in these things. When it comes to NFTs and crypto, specifically NFTs and this bubble that we're talking about today, it was super easy. Well, not super easy, but it was relatively easy to download a MetaMask, transfer some ETH over, connect your wallet, buy, sell, and trade NFTs. And quite frankly, if you've been following this channel, we have definitely made mistakes in the past. I have bought and held blue chips chips that are currently not blue chips. And, you know, I kind of got baited into that narrative, but we also discussed on this channel, the importance of not bag holding, the importance of flipping, the importance of getting in and getting out. And he talks about briefly in this clip, all of the greed and all of the craziness that went on during 2021 and parts of 2022, it really paints a clear picture of how important it was to make sure that A, you were not investing too much, B, you were in and out of most projects. So you could take advantage of this greed and this FOMO and this bubble and see, take all the lessons that you learned, take all of the important factors that you learned when playing this market, when being involved in this ecosystem and how to apply them in the next cycle, in the next wave of FOMO, in the next bubble. There were so many lessons here for so many different people, myself included. I learned so much during the crypto bubble of 2017 and the NFT bubble of 2021. I consider myself to be fairly open OG when it comes to crypto, although there's people who got in at 2009, 2010, you know, those people are insanely wealthy. I would say for the few that stuck around from 2017 to 2021, and you could have made a ton of money getting in at 2020 and getting out at 2021, right? As long as you were willing to let go of certain NFTs, of certain cryptos, and continuously take profits. I can name two people right off the bat who played that market incredibly well, not bag holding ever, always taking profits, taking ETH to USD almost instantly and they did really really well for themselves throughout the year that is not the easiest thing to do and it was also not a foolproof play either right they could have made a whole lot more gains if they had held a little bit longer but the fact is that what I've been saying on this channel if you take profits you can't lose that still reigns true let's not pretend that Wall Street hasn't been hammered in the last year let's not pretend that Wall Street, that real estate's about to get completely annihilated inflation's been difficult the biggest tech companies in the world are laying people off by the by the hundreds by the thousand, so we're in an economic correction. This was already wildly speculative and new, and we get out of it the same way the internet got out of it. In 2001 to 2004, a lot of the websites, you know, the slash dots, the friendsters, they became the previews to the Reddits and the Instagrams, and I think here in the next 36 months, including many people in this room and definitely people that are down here in Miami, that over the next 36 months, people are now gonna build meaningful things instead of fast things for fast cash, 
and then we'll look up in seven or eight years and be like, oh shit, it was 2023 when this started really getting built. I think this section of the clip actually touches on something that I find incredibly interesting, right? During the dot-com bubble, there was a ton of technology companies that came out that completely failed, but were, as he states in this clip, previews to really cool things that we use every day in real life today in 2022, approaching 2023. And so I think NFTs, certain projects that have come out now are going to be that exact thing. Crypto NFTs is going to be projects that come out now that do really well in the short term, end up falling off, but end up being previews, end up being innovations and another step forward for different projects, for different teams to come forward and build something incredibly exciting and incredibly disruptive. So I think there's a few important takeaways from this clip, but one of the main ones is definitely the fact that there are going to be projects probably during this cycle that are going to succeed. I don't know which ones. It could be Bored Apes. It could be Azuki. It could be Doodles. Who knows? But the fact is that there very well might be projects that end up more mainstream, that end up breaking through that veil from just being Web3 native to having some sort of important brand with a certain level of influence outside of our small sphere, our small ecosystem. So finding those projects could potentially be some of the best in investment choices you could ever make in your life, right? And the fact is that's going to be like finding a needle in a haystack. And the fact is that you're probably going to lose more times than you're going to win. And so the fact is that taking profits consistently over time ends up being the most consistent strategy you can take. You might miss out on some of the most life-changing gains ever as long as you're getting in and getting out fairly quickly, but you really can't lose doing it that way. For me, I like to allocate a certain percentage of my funds towards like a short-term investments. And then I like to allocate a certain portion of my funds toward longer term holds like DCA and crypto or buying legitimate potential blue chips in the NFT ecosystem and hanging on to those for the long term. Projects that have consistently made correct moves to give them secondary revenue streams outside of fees on the secondary marketplace, trying to really brand themselves, really succeed in communicating with their community and building a strong diamond hand community. I think all of that is incredibly important. It's going to be super interesting to watch what happens at the end of this year coming into the new year in January. I'm curious to see what happens with NFT volume, but the fact is that there are going to be a ton of losers and very few winners, but if you can find the winners, that's where all of the money is going to be. So I think the clear takeaway from these clips are, yes, the majority of projects are going to fail. The majority of projects already have failed. What to do, being able to take those lessons, being able to take those bad investments and learn and evolve and innovate your investment thesis and your investment strategy are going to be the people who succeed in 2023, 2024, 2025. We've already seen that our ecosystem has shrunk a lot recently. Less people on Twitter, less engagement, less new people joining, less trading volume, less people talking about X project, less people investing. And in this clip, he also talks about the fact that like, let's not make this all about Web3 and NFTs and crypto. The fact is that there is war real estate is down, stocks are down, inflation is up, the Fed is hawkish and raising interest rates. So it's not really as simple as like, hey, look, it was just an NFT bubble, a crypto bubble. I agree that it was, but also we have to look at all the macro factors and how that played into all of our investments going forward. All right, guys, now I briefly want to touch on the new Steady Stack partnership with Vinland. Vinland is my private Discord. Our new website is live. You can take a look right now at vinland.gg where we discuss some of the things that we do. But the most important part is members will be able to log in here and they'll get access to a bunch of different really cool things. So once you log into the Discord, if you are a part of the private membership, you'll get access to this dashboard, which has top 10 cryptos, market cap, a bunch of different information up here on the header, as well as top NFTs by volume over the past 24 hours. You'll also get the fear and greed index, which is basically just a number based off of market sentiment. And you'll also get another chart for Bitcoin and Ethereum. So I thought this was a really cool idea because when you're over on the top here, navigating the dashboard, looking at all the different whitelists that you'll get direct to contact roles in Discord, instructions, Twitter, Discord, etc. Past raffles, active raffles. You'll be able to easily check NFT volume, crypto prices, etc. All basically on the same website, all basically on the same page. You'll also get access to private videos where I discuss the market, my portfolio, answer questions, etc. And you'll get access to my current up-to-date portfolio and all of the cool stuff around that. So I wanted to discuss briefly the partnership between Steady Stack Titans and Vinland. And what you're seeing here on the screen is the 
ETH to USD chart for our timeline. And what you'll see here is a bunch of different indicators. And this is basically SteadyStack's proprietary trading bot software that they have given Vinlin access to. So but actually how it works is really cool. And the four hour timeline apparently boasts an 80% accuracy, which is incredibly impressive. And I'm not 100% sure how accurate that percentage is. But regardless, as you can see here, it is pretty good. And I'll give you a few examples. So the green TPs are essentially profit signals, right? So they're saying, okay, take a little bit of profit here. The red TPs are essentially just, okay, take a little profit here, but we're also currently in a downtrend. And so they have accompanied this algorithm, which you can see on TradingView here. They have also made Discord native bots that will essentially take the data from this and present it in a Discord format just from a quick ping. So what's really cool is, as you can see here, this red triangle here is a ping that happened in Discord via their bot to say to sell, right? So this ping, and then all of a sudden a huge capitulation. So whether that's coincidence or whatever data that this algorithmic bot takes into account, it has a pretty decent hit rate, right? So sell here, okay, sell here, boom, okay, sell here, boom, okay, buy here, boom, okay, buy here, boom, okay, buy here, boom, right? And so what's really cool is if you zoom out a bit, it was basically telling you from October of 2021 to November of 2021 to take profits during this entire bull run. Right? This was the main bull run that everybody was a part of for the most part where you know ETH was at 3K, which is still incredibly impressive, all the way up to almost $5,000. This was telling you to take profit that entire time, which is really, really cool. And once again, this stuff is not perfect and it's not going to be the end all be all for making money. But if you use indicators and algos like this in conjunction with the narrative and the news cycle and your own personal conviction, I really think it can help you make profitable trades. So what they basically do is these red pings and these green pings, the red and green pings without TP in the middle, basically get pinged into the Discord. So into Vinland's Discord, and it'll basically show up as, and I'll show you really quick. It'll basically present the information like this, where it'll basically say, okay, buy Ethereum USD on the one hour chart at X price, right? And it's not always gonna be perfect, but it has, and I've seen it ping right before a pump or right before a dump. And basically when it says buy, it basically is saying, okay, long here. Whenever it says sell, it's basically saying, okay, short here. Whatever leverage you decide to use, if you decide to use leverage at all, if you're just trying to swing trade, whatever it is, obviously you need to take into account all of the stuff that we discuss on this channel on a daily basis, which is how much money should I be investing? How much money am I gonna be allocating towards super risky trades like this, where it's like more short term based off of algos and news cycles and your own trading conviction. But the fact that Vinland has access to something like this, I think is incredibly important and is hopefully going to make us a decent chunk of money. So shout out to Steady Stack. This partnership I'm very excited about, super excited to be working with them in the future and also excited to give access to Vinland to this really cool algorithmic bot that they have made. All right, guys, that is going to be it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you like this content, if you like my point of view, if you like what I discuss on this channel, please make sure to hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, all of that good stuff. I am going to continue to be here for you guys throughout the bear market, sharing my perspective and hopefully helping you guys through this bit of a painful process. Once again, I hope you guys have a great week and I will see you guys in the very next video.